Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for April 3rd through 7th. We were preempted one day. It's kind of a crazy week. I guess we have to break this down really into nurses ball event and then storylines. Yes. Okay. For the most part, they did what we asked though. Every day was nurses ball and then they just put a little bit of story in that actually made sense. They weren't talking about stuff that had nothing to do with anyone involved at the nurse's ball and totally throwing us off. Right. So one, it's not really, Oh, we do have a poor, poor Charles pipeline to get to. Oh, but it's topic related and I'm not ready to go there yet. Okay. But on March 29th, 2023, uh, Michael Fairman released an article. Nakia Gar- Garland, General Hospital's beloved producer, passes away at 49. And I wonder if that's how Curtis's bartender, Nakia, got her name. Oh, that would be sweet. Her road to becoming a producer on GH began, began some 22 years ago when she started on the ABC soap back in 2021 as an executive assistant after she followed then One Life to Live EP and former GH EP Jill Farron Phelps to GH. She was eventually named as a coordinating producer in 2018 and finally as a producer in 21. Also that year, she won a daytime Emmy along with the rest of the producing team when GH won for Outstanding Drama Series. In fact, that year also saw the GH head writers Naming a character. I didn't even read this before. <laughs> oh, naming a character, a bartender at the Savoy after Nikia and played by Arlandria Lene. I am so, so sorry if I pass, if I did not do well on that. But it says that according to the Hollywood Reporter, she died from a heart attack at her home in Sherman Oaks on in California on Monday and passed away at St. Joseph's Medical Center in Burbank. At Providence St. Joseph's what? Medical Center. Sorry. Again, but that's fun, really young. Yeah. Yes. And really fun fact her half brother was Tupac. Oh, wow. But she <laughs> survived by her father, William, her brothers, Landon and Malik, and her sisters, Takira and Leslie. That's so sad. 49. <sighs> Not that there's a right age to pass away, but I no. don't like it where it's less than 80 some. <laughs> well, my husband and I just had this talk the other day because my family doesn't really make it that far. Mm. So I'm like, you've only got like 20 years left with me, dude. <laughs> a little over. <laughs> According to family nice, averages. Such a nice way to put it to him. <laughs> I mean, I take care of myself as best I can and all that but i mean one of the yeah we don't have to get all into that but that doesn't necessarily yeah, mean that you have to be around longer than that because we have to make it to 25 years of the podcast well we're already in our fifth season we forgot to mention that last week <laughs> the first being a saturday i feel like really threw off yes everything because that was general hospital 60th anniversary but it was also the four year anniversary of out oh, yeah four year anniversary yeah. and now we're into our fifth season so we've done five we're in our fifth season that's crazy i can promise you we'll we'll make it to a thousand episodes (laughs) okay because that's just another like four something okay years so i'm not gonna do that math right now Um, all right i just got back from i'll talk more about it during reality check but my daughter and i came home after midnight last night and we're tired so yes. Oh, I feel really bad. I didn't read that article, but I'm really happy that I was yeah, like, wait, cool that you, like, yeah, you drew the conclusion. You didn't need the article. Well, 
listen, I'm just going to throw this out there now. They need to give me a job. Yes. We'll talk more about that later. <laughs> I love you. Because where well, was I close? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, do you have anything fun? No. All right. So we'll do Hulu headlines. And we're just going to stick with this because this is what you and I read as we yes. uh, watch the show. Neither of us have satellite. But that it, I really do like hearing that there is other people are getting more information. Yes. So on Monday, the nurse's ball kicks off. Okay. Super accurate. Yeah. On Wednesday, because Tuesday was preempted, on Wednesday, Valentine makes a romantic gesture. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> on Thursday, Valentine is defiant. And on Friday, Laura is suspicious. So the only upsetting, well, not the only upsetting thing about all this is I think that Friday, what we're going to see tomorrow on Monday was supposed to be Friday, obviously. Right. And we were supposed to have the five episodes. And now it's just like waiting. Yeah. So do we want to, we just want to go over the acts or try to do it as it was presented do you want to go through each day okay well I, yeah so i'm going okay, between I don't, online I don't know I every day which is kind of how it went right so on monday we had the red carpet so that's easy enough yes. um how did lucy get a ball gown to the safe house right i mean in a gorgeous 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 ball gown mm -hmm. maybe she grabbed it on her way out from visiting maxi Maybe. It I wouldn't have that past her. Perfectly. Yeah. Well, it was one of hers. Maybe it's, I mean, I don't remember it, but maybe it's one that she knows her size. So maybe she buys extra and then she'd like to just wear whatever she feels like that day. Mm -hmm. You know how some days you pick out a dress and then you're like, oh, no, that's not what I want to wear. Yes. So maybe she has extras from one of the previous years and we haven't seen it because she just didn't feel like it at that time. That's a good call. Yes. I would not put it past Lucy to have extra clothes as she called out Bobby for not having a stylist. And she's complaining about how she doesn't want the gossip to overshadow the cause. I actually was with her with that because uh, so Chandra Wilson came back this week as Sydney Valjean. Um, yes. She is the West Coast editor of Crimson. I, I will allow a celebrity <laughs> super fan to have been the one that replaced us on the red carpet this year. I agree because she does love it as much as we do. She I loves agree. it. You could see her just being like, hey. yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, like I, bringing up all the really random. Right. Like, okay. So her asking questions about um, Spencer and Trina, that made sense because they would be like one of the hot new young couples and they were kind of making eyes at each other and stuff right. and maybe even mentioning to carly like oh does it feel different this year to be here when it's not your hotel and not your um ball that you helped put together and whatever but this stuff with ava and asking about nicholas that was just no if somebody asked me that anywhere let alone on the red carpet i would be like excuse me can you mind your own business well, and also the way that she asked carly like the you're used to getting everything you want and right is it is it weird she said something about i forget what exactly she said but there was one thing she said that i was just like it was like she she has your hotel and your man or something like that right yes yes and then she asked joss so are you used to getting what you want and joss didn't know how to answer like she's like yeah i do i'm a spencer <laughs> right and, you know, Carly had a really great opportunity to be like, nope, I'm just looking forward to the future and seeing what the future brings. But instead, mm -hmm. it sounded like she was kind of wanting the things back, you know, Yeah. instead and of just saying she doesn't. She does not want Sunny back. No, no. There was too much googly eyes or side eyes in the past week. Yeah. It started with Epiphany's uh, memorial. We forgot to talk about that. Yes. Yes, but even with those 
like side eye looks, it's funny looking at her like, oh, maybe I made the wrong choice. She's not looking at him like, oh, I'd like to get back with you. At Epiphany's funeral, she had a look at him. That was, it wasn't, oh, we just lost Epiphany. It was more, I'm looking at you. I felt like that was more of a shared history. I don't think so really many people to- asked me if I really thought that that I am apparently the only one that thought that her ashes were in the fireworks. See? And I, would, but I re- went back and rewatched it. She wanted to go out with a bang. And Liesl said, as she was sending them off, like safe voyage, my worthy adversary or something like that. I'm standing by that her ashes were in the fireworks. I'm not saying that you're wrong. It just did not occur to me whenever we were watching it at all. So yeah. I'm glad that I'm not the only one that was clueless. I did like that they dedicated the nurse's ball to Epiphany and Lucy. Yes. That was that was sad though. Like it was fun seeing the flashbacks of everything, but still it makes you sad. Yeah. I did like the flow, at least of Monday. I guess I liked the flow of how they went in and out of the nurse's ball to the outside the nurse's ball stories. Yeah. For the most part. Monday specifically, because they had Michael and Willow cuddling up to watch the nurse's ball. He's probably the one who backed out. Probably. That would make sense. Didn't even make, like, it didn't occur to me until they were doing that. And I was like, oh, wait, it was probably Michael who backed out. And then Drew came to visit. And yes, it was nice of Drew to visit. But they said they were where they wanted to be and that she was resting. I mean, it does make sense. I know that there's been stuff online about how not correct this part of the storyline is because if you're going for a bone marrow transplant, you're in isolation for a while and stuff to get your body ready. So the fact that she's out and about is not realistic, but you would at least be home resting, not out living it up at the ball the night before any procedure, I would assume. That makes a lot of sense. And then wouldn't Liesl be doing the same then? I would think so. Yeah. Even outside of COVID time. Because, I mean, they, right. they have not brought in COVID. So if it was only because of COVID, it would make sense that they wouldn't do that. But that sounds like it would make sense that they would not, that they would I'm require not, isolation. To me, that makes sense. I'm not sure the article that I read was pointing out the fact that before you get someone else's um, bone marrow, that they have to give you chemotherapy to kill yours off so it can accept the new. And mm-hmm. so... Um, that's why you're in isolation. So you don't get sick from anything else or whatever. So it would only make sense to me that they would keep the donor as healthy as possible also and tell you not to be out at big parties and things like that. Especially after they just had her go through all that testing and it's like, okay, we know at this point in time, you are okay. We're going to keep you that way as best as possible. Right. So don't go cuddling your grandkids who are Petri dishes and we are moms. We can say that. Right. Our kids bring home her. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, I liked that they had Willow at home, snuggling, optimistic about the future, but still like, yeah, this is where I should be. This is where I want to be. So. But then we didn't see them the rest of the week. So. No. Oh. Yeah, no. Michael was going to turn it off. And she said, no, don't. I want to see it. Like right as it was starting. I know you get sick of me saying this, but I feel like she's just going to die while watching it. Oh my God. And now, oh. and now I, when I we get to something not, else. I yes. didn't even think about that until I did not we, see that coming until they pointed it out in the storyline, but no, stop trying to kill Willow. I'm not trying to, it's just, they keep setting it up. You are accepting of it way too easy. Because just because yeah. she's Michael's girlfriend does or fiance does not mean that she has to die. We can let him have one person. <sighs> Ridiculous. I- I'm not a writer yet. <laughs> I'm not a so, paid writer yet. True. So down to the red carpet. Who is your favorite dress? Jordan's. Who's? Jordan. Yes. I absolutely loved hers. I thought the shade was stunning on her and it was just gorgeous yes how about you i was gonna say the same thing we're matching there portia's was really pretty too and the the way that it fit like the the way it crossed over her chest fitting but not like 
too much showy skin. I I liked that, but the way that Jordans fit, it was just perfect. Because I like how Porsches changed colors. It kind of had like a dark iridescence almost to it. Yes, yes. And I liked Joss's for her. Like that was an appropriate young lady dress. I thought that that was pretty. I don't understand out of all the times that we've dressed Carly and the woman wears blue all the time. Not she was wearing night. red. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry. I think it would have been so cool to see because Bobby was in a really, really dark, like navy blue. Mm-hmm. We could have had Carly in a light, a lighter blue. Right. And then Joss in the light blue. And I think that that would have been so cool to see, you know, the generational. Right. I mean, that woman wears blue like 95% of the time. And I didn't like that they had the red carpet host in a blue dress and Bobby in a blue dress. Well, What's her name? Cindy on there. Yeah. Their dress. I thought their dresses were too similar. I think they should have put her in a different color. She so wasn't in black. No, Why it was I a, think it was black with like silver. No, it's blue. Hmm. Don't tell me I'm colorblind now. I'm not. <laughs> I just didn't write down. Maxie's was black. Maxie's was black. Yes. But she had the V. I'm like, I swear I saw like a black dress. It was Maxie. Hers was- she had the suit though. Yes. I kind of liked that. I did like that. Although years ago when she was on the red carpet, they asked her what she was wearing. And she said, Cartulo, always Cartulo. Not this time. It was oh. Maha Cheng. Yes. So much for always Cartula. Well, that's who Nina was wearing, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I think so. I, I'm almost positive. Yeah, because they were introduced as the hosts of the ball. And so I'm pretty sure that she said she was Bobby. wearing Cartula. Bobby was a host, not Nina. Oh, sorry. Yep. Bobby. That's okay. I'm thinking think of her and Maxie that- hanging out. No, that's okay. I was trying to think. I'm like, did Nina say who she was wearing? But I think that Bobby said Cartula. Okay. Sonny and Dex arriving and Sydney was going gaga over his dimples. Yes. Yes. She said sure to that was a Sandra thing. Make sure you're protecting him. I was like, yes. <laughs> Sandra Wilson's just like, hee. Mm-hmm. And then when Nina walked in with Curtis, she was like, Oh, this is unexpected, but hello. I we keep forgetting that they're friends. They're yeah. supposed to be best friends. Right. And Sydney flirted with him and said how hot he was. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is where she said about how now she has Carly's hotel and man. Yes. Yes. Like, okay, I know that you're not Nina's biggest fan, but come on. That's right. Right. No, it was inappropriate. And I think that's when um, Lucy freaked out over. Seriously, we just need to have the red carpet. No drama. Like no recapping the town gossip. It's about the charity. Right. And Spencer think- arrived and she said that he was the most eligible bachelor. Yeah. He's 21. And- right. He's like, I don't <laughs> think so. Mm-mm. Like this isn't teen beat when we were interviewing, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Like, I don't think people magazine names a newly 20 something year old, the most eligible. They wait for the thirties and forties. Yes. Yes. When you're actually most likely looking to settle down. Spencer's not ready to settle. <laughs> oh, no. I don't. Uh, I swear they need to stay. I'm just. I would be good with that. I would be good with that. He is so, so good at keeping him in line, but not in a bossy way. In a, this is how being a good human should be way. Mm-hmm. And helping him have the guidance that he didn't get when he was younger. Right. But also making it his decision ultimately on. Which one are you going to choose? Yes. All right. We just jumped ahead. Sorry. That's okay. I I don't. So is there any other storyline on Tuesday other than Victor trying to track down where Lucy was? Um, I don't know. We're still on Monday. Yeah. I'm sorry. Monday. Um, I'm, I'm like trying to jump. Although there wasn't one on Tuesday. Jump to Wednesday. I don't think there was any other storyline Monday. See, I'm almost fell again on the red carpet. Yes. And Dante caught her. That was sweet. Finn asked to escort Liz. Mm -hmm. Chase arrived alone. He did. And at one time, Nina said, save the drama for your llama. And I thought that was really cute because she laughed at herself and it was really cute. Yes, that was backstage for something. 
Yeah. And she was talking to Maxie and them. And that was, that was cute. See, that's how I had it originally. I had red carpet and then hospital and then backstage, but then I was traveling and wasn't able to take notes on um, the way that I usually do. So they're in a notebook. Yeah. So I'm just a mishmash right now. Going to do the best I can. And we're recording through Zoom. So if it sounds a little off, that's why. Well, I mean, it is Easter. We are entitled to stay at home with families. There is that. (laughs) We did both decide, though, that this was okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I know we talked about having a substitute, but like this week, we can't have a substitute. No. No. (laughs) Love our substitute choice. This is not the right week. Yeah. For it. That'll be a future one. So we're not going to announce who that is. <laughs> and then Austin and Ava were getting ready for the nurse's ball. And Portia wasn't going to go because Curtis is going. Portia right. Portia is more mature than that. I loved the fact that Ava jumped to, oh, he filed for divorce. And she was like, no. what? Yeah. He was like, well, then get your dress on and go. It's not over yet, girlfriend. Fight for your man. Right. Oh, I loved Maxie's introduction over the intercom as the doors were opening yes monday gave me really really high hopes for the week yeah it felt like it was set up really well but then backstage took chase in brooklyn just having the same oh so tired of this conversation i really you're, like you you're so nice oh you, but I'm not you lied to me you're yeah. selfish you did what's but, in your best interest but I'm going to tell you how much you mean to me and how much I like you in between all that so that we can just be as confused as possible. Do you know what though? Okay. So he's singing the songs that she writes, right? Yes. Okay. I read, it was, it was a meme and it said, you know, everyone's praising Taylor Swift for like how honest she is in her music and don't get, I love Taylor Swift. So this is not a knock on Taylor Swift, right? but about how she does not even say who the song's about, but we all know that it's about, you know, her own life. They said, yet Stevie Nicks wrote the song about her ex and made him sing it. Yes. Yes. I was like, oh my gosh, she did. She did. (laughs) So that's basically what Brooklyn's doing right now with Chase. Chase. Right. Brooklyn's like Stevie Nicks. (laughs) Yep. This great song came from how heartbroken I am because of you. Now go sing it with Beth Blaze. It'll be great. But exactly. Yep. I loved it. Um, and then we find out that Victor was tracking Lucy's car, the ride share. Right. Which makes sense because it's an app. So, yes, exactly. it can be traced. Yeah, Lucy was really stupid with that one. Like, you can only try the same trick so many times before you're going to get caught. Come on. Right. So. And then yeah. I think that was it for Monday. I think. No, or did they do the opening number? They did the opening number because that was like what it closed with was they did the number and then it stopped for the next to roll into the next day. So the opening number was Lovely Day by Bill Withers. It was performed by Felix Deanna, who I think she just got a last name for the first time this week. Did she? She said her last name. and I don't remember her ever saying her last name. I honestly don't know. Okay. And TJ and Amy, mm-hmm. I didn't know that TJ could sing. Did we know that TJ could sing? I did not know that, no. But this would be the first, I don't like how they wrote this though. This is, it's also Michael Fairman. It says this would be the first nurse's ball without former GH head nurse Epiphany Johnson. No, it's the first since 2013 without her. Right. What did you think of that? I don't know. I felt like it was lacking, but at the same time, I feel like what I felt it was lacking was epiphany and there's no way to fix that. So it was just a little too, I don't know, like cartoony or something. I don't. Yes. No. Yes. That's, I was trying to think of the same because they would always open with the welcome to the nurses ball. Yes. Especially where we had just, even though it was, we had just had Maxie say, we're dedicating this to epiphany and Lucy. It should have stayed the same. Yeah, even shown the clips of old ones or, and then had them come out to something. I just didn't feel like that was a good opening number. An opening right. number is bam. 
Mm -hmm. And that was, oh, this is nice. Yeah. It was lovely. <laughs> it, was lo it was lovely. Uh, again, I didn't think it was awful. I just, it felt like it was missing something. Mm -hmm. And then that was the end of Monday. Uh-huh. And then Tuesday, is that when, see, this is where I'm going to lose my days. Okay. Hold on. We go to Tuesday, which was preempted. So that mm -hmm. actually became Wednesday. And I think that's when it opened with talking more about Victor tracking Lucy. Yes. Lucy was at the safe house. All upset, still just all upset about the fact that she wasn't going to be at the nurse's ball. And Valentine's like, we will literally die if we go. Right, right. And I'm sorry, Lucy is very, Lucy can be very self-serving, but Lucy is not that self-serving. Right, right. It was pretty laid out here. If they find us, they're going to kill us. And we need to hide here until that is taken care of. She'd already talked to Maxie a hundred thousand times and given her all kinds of direction. They were dedicating it to her. The only thing that they said that like set her off was, oh, it's going to be better than ever. And she was like, oh, no, not without me, blah, blah, blah. You would not risk your life for that. But I mean, at that point, I guess she already had because she had told them. But that's exactly it. She already had. She had already confided in. Did she already tell them that she had left? No, she hadn't. That's right. Okay. So she was thinking she could still do it without getting caught. caught. Yeah. But okay. Yes. When it comes to men, like when it comes to her wanting Scotty, yeah, she'll do whatever it takes. But right. not when it comes to somebody's life being on the line, especially more than hers. And especially like Anna. Right. And everyone who's involved. She's not. Yes. She knows that this was multiple people trying to protect them that could get in trouble if this goes the wrong way. She would not just be like, oh, who cares? It's fine. Right. Exactly. And it's Victor. I mean, granted, yeah, she has kind of overcome him in the past, I guess. So she might have like a little bit of, Psh, he can't hurt me. Right. But she but has to have seen he's gotten a little bit crazier with the whole kidnapping her and locking her up in the French catacombs. Right, right, right. Going to flood you and kill you. You'll be okay. Or shoot you and then kill, yeah. Oh, Lucy. It's all about the nurse's ball. But, uh, Victor was basically saying, go ahead, just basically kill them. Yeah. Well, he said, keep keep Valentine and Anna, but you can just kill Lucy as soon as you see her. She doesn't mean anything. Yep. And then it went back to the nurse's ball, and you saw Joss and Dex making goo-goo eyes at each other. Yep. And you saw Spencer and Trina still making goo goo eyes at each other <laughs> and then a lot of goo goo Joss, eyes this week <laughs> yes and then joss and trina talking about they were going to do their number and then they had that whole awkward moment with jordan and curtis and them all reaching for the same glass of wine or whatever champagne yeah <laughs> I just don't know why they throw that stuff in there. Like make them sit down and have a conversation or don't, but this back and forth, same thing. I'm assuming if this was your actual marriage, you wouldn't just live weeks and weeks just walking past each other and not having any type of conversation. So. Yeah. I don't know. Was it Joss and Trina that performed first after the nurses? I think so. Yeah. Joss and Trina saying, they sang The Middle by Marin Morris. I thought that they did a great job. I was confused by them losing their mics, though, and still being able to sing. Yeah, I didn't understand like, how the mic was a prop, and then it wasn't. I, I don't know. Right. I, but, I, mean, I, I thought picked... that I love their outfits. I love that. I, I, oh, I, I, like... yeah, I would have picked different outfits for them. Oh, see, I think Trina looked sharp. Maybe for Joss, but I thought that that look was really nice on Trina. I would have put the background dancers in those outfits, but had them in something a little more, I don't know, just different. Sparkly, like 
because they were in suits, maybe the bottom shirt, like super sparkly or something. It felt like kind of muted. Okay. Like the cami. Yeah. Like the, yeah. They're young and I don't know. I just feel like they would be in the sparkles. So I don't know. I, I wasn't super impressed, but I wasn't, I didn't not like it. I felt like it was appropriate for the age that they're supposed to be and like the level that they're supposed to be on. Two friends getting together. They can both sing well. Yeah. That kind of, that I assuming that was the vibe we're supposed to get off of it. And so I felt like that was what you got from it. Yeah. And then storyline wise, Sunny Gladys and Sasha were sitting around. So Sasha had Glenn Horn, which I think is also a new business. It's a jeweler who had donated a gorgeous bracelet for a photo shoot for Crimson. And they're just allowed, or deception. Mm -hmm. And they're just allowed to borrow it, which, I mean, we know this. We know that celebrity right, borrow that. Yeah. yeah. And it comes with a bodyguard. Right. But Sunny being like, so Sasha, how are you feeling? Oh, are you going to go back to taking care of your own business soon? Yep. And kind of like got really up. shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's definitely going to be some questions. So that was what I didn't understand. And I know we're fast forwarding some, but just because the storyline goes together. So Sasha is talking to Cody about, you know, hi, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. We're very friendly, whatever. And Gladys is saying, stay away from him. Stay away from him because Gladys knows that he knows that she sold the business to get out of her gambling debt or whatever. And she's him and her have confronted each other on this already at the nurse's ball. And then she turns around and plants the bracelet on him so that it looks like he's a thief. And when they go to arrest him, he doesn't say anything about what Gladys has done. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Okay. Cause I, like, He's like, no, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. No, I didn't do it. And Gladys is like, oh, come on, blah, blah, blah. And then they asked, like, what other reason would there be? And he's just like, oh, I'm not guilty. Why would you not say uh, Gladys is setting me up because she doesn't want me to tell Sasha that she's taking all her money. And so she wants me to look like I'm not credible. And he kind of did drop the hints, though, with the, well, did Gladys go over the details of the sale before she sold it? Does she tell you who she sold it to? Right. All those things. So I think that maybe, maybe that's why he didn't say anything because he didn't want to put Sasha on the spot in front of everyone to learn all this information in front of everybody. But He's maybe it's like, I am. <laughs> but maybe like he just put those little thoughts in her brain so that later on, I mean, he didn't know that he was going to be arrested, but right. now maybe after the ball's over, Sasha will be like, well, you know what? You never told me who you sold to or anything. And that'll be starting to give enough doubt that Sasha will on her own come to those conclusions because maybe he just didn't want, I, they don't need to be together. You know, Sasha can. Right. You can still have a good friend. You know, you can still yes. have a really good guy friend and vice versa. So maybe that's what he doesn't want her to see him in a bad light, even though he just got arrested. But he's also not the kind of guy that's going to throw somebody else under the bus just to make himself, even though he's 1000 bajillion percent innocent. Right. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. He's better than me then because, okay, to a point, sure, I'm not going to rat somebody else out and you can think of me what you want to think of me. But when it comes to they're putting cuffs on me, oh, yeah, wait a second. Let me tell you the whole story because I'm not going to jail for this. Maybe he's just so used to. And I think, I mean, that's a thing, too. You just get so used to being the one who's taking the fall for everything that he just kind of goes with it. And you're just like, it makes no sense to even try because who's going to believe him? Right. But I think Sam did when she came out and, and he was like, no, seriously, I didn't do this. And they hauled him off. I think Sam did believe that he was not the one who did it. He was not. I absolutely it. agree. So I'm hoping that she uses her investigative skills to get him out of there quickly. And she explained how the nurse's ball is paid for to him by the vendors and all the products and services are donated. That way, every penny that is raised is donated. Yes. I love that. I do too, but it brings us back to what we say every year of why is there not a ticker on the bottom so that we can donate? 
Like, come on. If it's not on there next year, I'm seriously going to be angry. Like, we have told you enough times. Get with it. I mean, I don't know how all of that works. Oh, oh, oh. Our buddy, Steve Silverman, World Gone Good podcast. Yeah. Came up with an amazing idea. And why haven't they done this yet? And why didn't they do that? Do it for the 60th. ABC is owned by Disney. Uh-huh. Why are they not doing like a Disney themed nurses ball? Oh, that would have been cute. Let me get you his exact. We got a lot of Disney at Christmas time though. Maybe that's all they thought we could take. I wish they did like a Disney or Broadway themed. Disney owns all of ABC. They could do Disney reimagined moments. Oh, that would be cute. Super cute. Yeah. So. Yeah, they could have just done like the main scenes of the just different Disney like love stories. That would have been mm -hmm. cute. Hmm. Yes, for next year. There you go. We still saw Victor. Like they kept flashing back to him sitting in his limo talking to his bad guys and saying, oh, where are they now? Oh, what's this? Oh, what's that? And then we see one of the bad guys come into the ball and tell um, Spencer that he must take Victor's call whenever he calls and that he must do whatever he tells him to do. So you're on Friday already. We got to jump way back, though, back to Wednesday. No, he told him to talk. He told him to take Victor's call before Friday. Did he? Friday was when the call actually came in. Well, that might have been Thursday because that was after that was after one thing happened. And that one thing happened after the thing that happened Wednesday. <laughs> OK, go ahead and clarify why I messed up. <laughs> because that happened after the romantic scene at the cabin. Oh, because the phone call was talked about after the shootout started. Okay. And that didn't happen until after. Oh my gosh, could I have been more right? You were 100% right. I was just bored with it. The only difference was it wasn't a Yamaha. It was a baby grand. And I'm yeah. because I'm Yamaha budget. And I did not yeah. grow up with baby, baby grand pianos. I did think it was weird that he's like, I found this in the attic and fixed it up. Instead of just saying, it doesn't play right, but I still want to play you. And she's like, oh, you're going to sing for me. And he's like, I wrote, wrote a thousand songs for you. I loved it because we got to hear James Patrick Stewart singing and it showcased Vanola Hughes's amazingly graceful talent as a dancer. Not entirely, but enough. And I thought it was nice because they were kind of fantasizing about not being in the situation that they're in, but it showed, it showcased both of their real life skills. And so I really, I like that they were able to bring that in. And not make us go an entire year without hearing him sing. And it was just nice because they were all romantic together. Yeah, I just don't love them the way that you do. Um, I was happy to hear him sing because I wouldn't have wanted to go another year without that. And seeing her dance is beautiful. But I just felt like it gave me Mr. Roger feelings. Like the way that they went to the imaginary What's wrong world. with Mr. Roger feeling? <laughs> Nothing's wrong with it. But as I was watching it, it was like, now we're in the land of make-believe. <laughs> Whenever they it's were dancing wholesome. around. I, I just... Well, it's I okay because you're not alone. Holly Dordell said, okay, I love Valentin and Anna, but come on. That song and dance number was just too much. I was cringing, cringing, cringing. If some dude started singing to me like that, I'd run for the hills. I, I thought it was so sweet. He was making the most of it. He knew how much Anna wanted to be there because it was such a personal I, thing for her. I agree that if he would have just started singing to her it would have been okay but the fact that he like made the production out of it and if it would have just stuck with them in the present moment where they were then that would be fine but the like fantasy that they were both in like i said it felt like you were in the land of make-believe like get back on the trolley to go to real life because this was not it see it reminded me of singing in the rain when gene kelly and debbie reynolds are on the sound stage nope Nope, because they went from stage to stage. There's a scene that I'm thinking of, and it has Gene Kelly in it. I know what I'm thinking of. All right. You'll remember it in the middle of next week. <laughs> Be like, I will. Oh, now I know. But that's it reminded me of like an old school musical where 
that's what happened. You know, they started singing, then suddenly we're seeing them in this completely not anywhere near the setup surroundings that they're supposed to be in, but we see them like yeah. in the imagined ideal setting. And then we see them come back to, so, I mean, I love old musicals though, too. So that's probably yeah. why we're, I, we're allowed to disagree. We do it very often. So. I know, but <laughs> I'm just saying cool. like, that's, but that's probably why I liked it so much was that it felt very, yeah. but I mean, seriously, I wrote the entire thing. They didn't right. do the tango. Thank God. When I saw her first, like cross behind him, I was like, if he turns around and grabs her and they start tangoing, I would be so angry. But how could, I wasn't even thinking of Michael and Morgan probably had some toys in the attic. Right. Right. I was totally messing around and I was so right. You were so right. You were and so I right. swear on like everything in my life, husbands, kids, Husbands. Husbands. I only have one. (laughs) Husband, kids, cat, house, everything. Like I had zero, zero clue. Yeah. No, that was perfect. You, you wrote it. Yes. So that gets done. And then Lucy comes out and says she didn't want to interrupt them because she heard them singing and whatever, but that she needs to go to the nurse's ball and that she's going to leave because she had already done it once so it was fine and that's whenever they like flip out about what do you mean you already did it and yes how did you get there and how did you get back and blah 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 blah, well, blah. i walked a half mile i'm not that stupid <laughs> right because they're not going to track it at all i didn't like though when the kids went to the cabin it was sunny's cabin at the ski lodge or by the ski lodge right And that was like the whole premise. They were going there to go skiing and that's where you go. When they first got to the safe house, it was all snowy and whatever. And it was kind of led to that same, okay, they're there because it's in the middle of nowhere. But then this week they're like, oh, it's in the middle of a suburban neighborhood, blah, blah, blah. So I'm wondering if it's similar to how people buy vacation homes and second homes up by like Seven Springs. Okay. That would make sense. And it is more of like a resort town. Okay. So therefore it would kind of be a separate because I had the same thought and I was like, oh, but wait, if it's a popular vacation type area, people tend to buy homes rather than always renting a hotel or like if they do that that much. So maybe that was. Maybe. I don't know. It just felt like they were twisting it to a different storyline no i because i had the very right it's not secluded if you're in a suburban neighborhood right so but at the same time it is because you're hiding in plain sight yes so and it, i mean maybe there so i mean we live in the suburbs mm-hmm. but there are places i mean i can see my neighbors there are places in the suburbs that you can't have seclusion that you can have trees in between the houses and everything. Cause yeah. that's what we see is it is secluded. Right. But maybe it's just, you know, like a nice perimeter with the trees around them. And that's part of the experience of having that type of a home in that area is maybe being nestled in nature or something like that. So Valentine gets all mad at Lucy and is like, we have to get out of here now. Yes. And he walks outside and has a sniper thingy on him i thought yes and lucy's still like no i don't want to go i don't want to go and that's what i'm talking about like lucy is not i don't like that yeah she listens to anna when it's life or death she wouldn't have been putting up that much of a fight i don't feel like but then they threw a smoke bomb into the house and so Anna and Valentine had to get ready to protect themselves. And then they told Lucy just to go ahead and go because they wouldn't be paying attention to her. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, you saw that coming just because that was the way that they were building up to it. You knew that that was all going to happen. And then they get there and tell Valentine, okay, we need to know where the ice princess is right now. And he's like, oh, I don't know where that is. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have that. Until they almost kill Anna. And then suddenly he's like, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. He didn't almost kill him. He was kill her. He was going to have her paralyzed. Yes. Which that's. 
that's awful. You don't think that Anna knew some way to get out of that hold, though? I mean, she was a spy. Yeah, but the gun was also on Valentine, and she also wouldn't risk him being shot. Like, she wouldn't risk somebody else being shot for her freedom. Yeah, I guess so. Regardless of who it is, I really don't think that she would have. Like, if it had been anybody, I don't think she would have risked somebody else being shot. I just feel like she could have got out of it. But anyway, he gave them the necklace and then uh, they shot Anna anyway. I was not, I did not see that coming. No. I mean, we know from the doctors that she's fighting, but she coded in the ambulance. Right. And they brought her back. Robert and Laura quickly got there. Yes. I thought if they would have shot her that they would have shot her like in the leg so that they couldn't chase after him but not in the stomach like that like that was a major wound well and there is an artery in your leg that if you open it you could bleed out like right you could die from that right but i still feel like i would think i had less chance to hit that artery in your leg than to kill you by shooting you in the stomach because that was a pretty major wound so but then again, his goal was not necessarily to kill her. It's just to keep Valentine there. Yeah. It was to make him see her suffering, him to suffer while watching her suffering. Right. And if she died, okay. I guess that's an added perk. <laughs> but then I guess back at the nurse's ball, is that when Spencer and Trina were talking about, so what are we, are we together? Or what did he say? He's like, so we kissed. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, would you be in favor of doing that again? You know, it was so cute. They had that conversation right before Joss, and we forgot to say that earlier, right before Joss and her went on because Joss walked out to grab Trina and Spencer was like, oh my God, you have the worst timing. Yes. But he was so sweet because he said, I would have loved to have walked in with you on my arm. And she said, what, as your accessory? And he's like, you are absolutely nobody's accessory. I mean, he worships her and... Okay, you shouldn't worship your partner. But he thinks so highly of her and yes. he just radiates and supports her for being her. Not that right. he wants to control her or have her as a perk. You know, it's right. And then Sonny was the first one to interrupt because he interrupted and was like, Hey, do you know that Uncle Victor checked out of the Metro Court? And he's like, What are you talking about? Yes. Yes. Then that's when Spencer went back and was like, okay, so back to us, which I mind <laughs> kissing again, because I'm okay with that. So right. are we together? And they're officially together. They were for- officially together. And then like, not 10 minutes later, but a half hour later, she walks out to him yelling at Dex and is like, what are you doing? Don't tell me I'm wrong about you again. Like, come on. Right. Right. I I love that she puts him in his place and is like, you were mad about something and you were just trying to start a fight and Dex is not who you should be fighting with. Cam's not even here. He's off living his dream. So quit being a jerk to this guy. Yep. And that's whenever he got the call from Uncle Victor and she was like, seriously, you're going to answer that in the middle of this conversation? And Uncle Victor says, come to the haunted star, but don't tell anyone that that's where you're going. Right. Do you really think he didn't tell Trina that's where he was going? I'm sure that he probably did because it was probably more of a, if you don't hear from me in an hour, right? here's where I'm going to be. Right. Or or just uh, Uncle Victor needs to talk to me. I'll be back before the show's over and we can continue our conversation about being boyfriend, girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. So that she's aware that that's where he went. I don't yeah. see him just going and not saying anything. Neither do I, especially where he's trying to really, I don't want to say make up for things, but he is trying to make the right decisions for her, for them, Mm -hmm. for himself under her guidance, I guess. And then the next act was uh, Georgie and no, No, before that was Deanna introduced Danielle Ponder. Oh yeah. A real life artist who in real life did leave a lucrative, highly successful law career and became an artist. And I loved the only thing I don't like is when it's super awkward when they bring, when they bring in like real life celebrities sometimes, because we saw it with 
when they brought in that wrestler to see Alice. It made sense when Morgan was saying certain things like you're my favorite or when the wrestler said, oh, yeah, my flapjack is after your pancake or whatever the name of his move yeah. was, you know, like that was a cute little tie. But then to have Michael and was it Star or Kiki at the time, whoever, whichever whatever character she was. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Saying, oh, and I love Jennifer Hudson. She's my favorite. You basically get like a mini biography of the guy, but it's just like awkwardly put in there. Yes. And they kind of did the same thing with Carly with the, so how did you know that it was the right time to do that? Right. And I did like her saying, you know, I had to really think about it. And I was like, I'm not ready to give up music. I'm not going to do it. And so she pr is pursuing music. And she says, I'm sure you know something about that. Right, Carly? Yeah. And it just felt so awkward. Yeah. It would have been something different if, if there had been more, I guess, chatter around it. And then right. you know, maybe if her talking with, who was she talking with? She was there somewhere. They should have had it a few days ago where someone said, oh, my gosh, did you hear at the last minute that this singer has offered to come and sing for the nurse's ball because she believes in this cause, too, or something. Yes. So that other people could be like, oh, my gosh, I love her, blah, 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 and be excited about it. So they, like, didn't hype it up the way that I feel like they should have. And then whenever Carly ran up to her, that's not Carly. Like, Carly ran a major hotel where very important people came and stayed. She's been to all different countries with Sunny and met very important people. She would not walk up to someone famous and be like, oh, my gosh, blah, 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 I just had to meet you. Like that. She wouldn't fangirl that hard. Not saying that she wouldn't be a fan, but she would hold herself together better than that. Well, and also we were told that there was going to be a very special guest and, or like a very something. Mm -hmm. And she was the very special surprise guest. And that's fantastic. She's a real life artist, all that. However, this is General Hospital's 60th anniversary. Right. So we're thinking, and if you think back to the 50th anniversary, Right. Blackie and the Riff Raff was supposed to perform and then wound up getting sidetracked. That's right. who I 1000% was ready to take the stage. I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to have Blackie come yes. and play as yes. passing it. Oh, because somebody said maybe it'll be Dr. Noah Drake. Like Rick Springfield right. will come through. But he right. did that for the 50th, right? He played for the 50th. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Well, I love both came back for the 50th. Yeah. And I just thought, how cool would it be is we talked about them on the 60th mm -hmm. or the 50th. They should be swinging through Port Charles as part of their tour and do the nurse's ball for the 60th anniversary. Right. Right. And I, I almost kind of, I feel like Danielle did a great job. I mean, I, that oh, kind of voice. It's, oh. She just didn't, it just didn't fit. I mean, it fit that she, you know, had an inspiring story and that's great, but it didn't fit the GH way of things. Like even if they would have done that Blaze was sick and suddenly yes. we had um, Chase and Eddie Main sing together or something like that, like bring us our characters, not a new person that we're never going to see again. Or like you said, at least have it make sense in the storyline she was just dropped in and she's going to be pulled unless she's going to have some kind of a small arc. Right. It, right. This, this doesn't make sense, especially for the 60th, you exactly. know, especially for an anniversary year. If this was almost any other year. Right. I, I don't know. Again, I, I mean, don't know. She, it was a wonderful performance and she sang beautifully. I just didn't understand why that was the choice. Right. Like this is absolutely nothing against the act, the singer making yeah. her acting debut. I love those that kind of a voice, like the really, really rich, right. Like gets you to your bones voice. Like I was blown away by her performance. It just didn't make sense in the grand scheme of things. Exactly. And it's not like she even said, Oh, my epiphany is my cousin or something yes. like that. Yes. That would have been easy. And that would have made sense. Jeez. Yep. <laughs> okay. So 
Finn introduced Chase and Blaze, and Link had, in the meantime, been backstage, being all gross with... Well, no, the kids were before that. Mm -mm. I have them written in order. I thought the kids were before that because... I thought that Brooklyn like blew up at, towards the end of one of the episodes. Brooklyn blew up, but it wasn't, it was after, when was it? Hold on. I thought it was right after Chase and Blaze. I thought the kids were first because that was when Obrek disappeared. Maybe it wasn't. I just wrote it because I have them written like in the order that they went in, but maybe I just wrote those ones backwards. I'm, I'm almost positive that the kids went first because that is how... Obrecht ended up missing, and I thought that that was why Brooklyn saw um, Link talking to Jocelyn, because she was in the back helping look for Liesl, and then was saw him pawn all over Jocelyn and was like, no. Nope. Soap Central. All that happened before James and Georgie. Oh, all right. Finn's been around for seven years. I know. That was shocking. When he said that, I was like, are you sure? <laughs> right, right, exactly. Were you the same character that whole time, or are you collectively counting your personalities? Okay, so it started on Thursday, and okay. then it says so. That's it. Opened with Maxi thanking Danielle for performing, having the conversation with Carly. So we've already covered all the Gladys Mac or the Gladys Sasha stuff. So like yes. we don't have to right. And then it was Spencer and Trina having the argument over the dex thing because that happened but then oh and before that sunny goes backstage and gives bobby a check for a scholarship in epiphany's name yes another thing i said yes 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 so i would just like gold star for you just <laughs> you wrote this week's episode you know our email address just shoot us a line i and more than happy, you're already using some of my ideas. <laughs> Seriously, though, how cool would that be? Oh, that would be amazing. This week, I was just like, check, check, check. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not, like, really one to really, like, toot my own horn about this stuff. But I'm no, like, oh, no, this you, is... You called it. You called... I mean, Sonny doing the check for Epiphany wasn't that shocking because that's the kind of guy that he is. But you did write the scene with Anna and Valentine, And that was, like... <laughs> Well, I didn't call the Sunny, but I said, if they don't start a scholarship in Epiphany's name for nurses, right, right, right. that's messed up. And yes, Sunny was the one. sure did. It. And it makes sense that it would be Sunny that does it. Yeah. And made all Bobby all cry. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's like, you can be a real jerk. And I don't like the way you treat my daughter, but you can also be the nicest guy. And this is awesome. Yep. But then that's when Finn introduced them. And. Chase and Blaze saying, arrest me. And then afterwards is when Blaze announced like their new singles coming out and Link came out on stage and he had already spoken with Joss backstage because he approached her shortly after her there. This is why right. those two were so close together was because he had approached Joss. Brooklyn put an end to the conversation he's like you're getting dangerously close she goes i did not say a single thing about you being a sleaze right you know i just made it super uncomfortable for you to still be here yep exactly and i just told you to leave that girl alone and then he went out because she had seen blaze being super uncomfortable and i think that we were supposed to be alluding to that he acted inappropriately and crossed the line with blaze backstage he walked in yeah he walked in and then she said okay i have to get dressed and he was like that's okay you can do that while i'm in here right so ew i am just glad that they shut that down super quick because i'm like i swear to god if we have joss being sexually assaulted on top of everything she went through last year right that's not cool like that's that's not cool so i'm really really glad that brooklyn stormed the stage and told everyone Oh, Ned jumping up. Yes, he was like ready to go. What do you mean you were sexually harassed? Yep. And then he said about how she's making this up because she's just a has-been and blah, blah, blah. And Blaze grabbed the microphone and says, nope, I don't have a non-disclosure agreement. Every single thing that she says is true. And yeah. Yeah, that was great. And then... um. 
he says to Chase, oh, sh- you know, be quiet. You're not even a cop. And Dante's like, but I am. Here's some cuffs. Turn around. Let's go. Yep. And then is when, which that's like super awkward to then put children on the stage. James right. has now been aged up because he should yeah. only be four next month. Yep. Still didn't have a birthday. <laughs> Still hasn't had a birthday. This poor kid. <laughs> We now have him being like six, but he still never had a birthday. Um, they're, he they're and Georgie. Yes. That was so cute. Yeah. And it was their I Alma. I, I loved even more just the back and forth between Spinelli and Maxie. Like the proud parents, aren't they so cute? Like they're so silly, blah, blah, blah. And that was adorable. That was really good. I liked that they had that little. I like how they interacted too. Like, okay, Georgie, we need some magic. Tap, tap. Yes, yes. It was but then Liesel actually went missing and poor James yes. is like, magic worked. And Georgie's like, uh, something went wrong here. <laughs> exactly. Where did she go? But th- that I didn't see coming. And then whenever um, Nina was like, yeah, Aunt Liesel wouldn't just get up and walk away. Tomorrow is the bone marrow transplant. I was like, oh my gosh, that's right. Are we really going to kill Willow? But she also wouldn't do that to her grandkids. Like right. in the middle of their act, she would yeah. not have just been like, hey, I should. I thought it was funny that Sonny's like, well, is there a trap door underneath? Maybe she's hurt. You know, maybe we should go check that. Right. But even when Victor said, I found a substitute for the Cassidine heir or whatever. I mean, I know that's not what he was kidnapping Liesl for. Right. But it didn't occur to me that he would kidnap Liesl. Mm -hmm. no exactly i did not i did not think that at all and then and then maxi did introduce the magic wands which was tj cody dex yuri and milo and two random dudes no felix yeah i was disappointed that there wasn't a felix but i did like this year's a lot better i felt like it was a lot more dancing and like a production an actual number than just here let us rip our clothes off and they like rip their clothes off. i'm sorry like that's yeah. where i kind of it's like you cannot do that to the floor so much yes yes exactly and that, like the they, last time they did it they had them all in a circle doing it and hopping and doing it again and then hopping and doing and i'm like guys no yeah exactly they had them go out into the crowd to like their friends or significant others or whatever so it wasn't like weird that they were dancing in front of them for a minute and then they st- they had pants on still then and then they went up to the stage ripped the pants off and turned around and their bums said nurses ball 2023 but terry wasn't there i know that was disappointing so, so confused by some of this yeah she would have enjoyed that it, i thought it was a good number i thought they listened to us about don't make it quite so adults, but at the same time, kept it like spicy enough that you were like, oh, those boys are cute. Because they went on right after the kids. Yes. So it's like, remember, this is our audience, four years old to 70, you know? Right. And beyond. But I like, I was good with it this year. What was the song that they. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I was not paying attention to the music. Devil in Disguise, a dance version of Devil in Disguise. Okay. And it turns out that that little girl that was backstage and yeah. Milo said, hey, break a leg. Yeah. That's his daughter. Ah, That's Drew Cheatwood, Chatwood, Cheatwood's daughter. She had flown out with him while they were taping. So they included her in the festivities. Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. Because, yeah, I wondered, like, who is this random kid? Yep. But then that was Friday's episode. So it's like, okay, maybe there's more coming. Right. Right. Because they said you're going to be on soon, sweetie. Go back with your people. So. Yep. So that's his daughter. That is very cute. I think her name's Grace. Hold on one second. Yep. Grace. Aw. And you look at the picture of the two of them. That is so cute. Yes. Yeah, you really couldn't, like, focus on her face that much because she was just kind of, like, running through, literally. And so I did not pay attention. But that's cute. Yeah. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> but exactly. So, like, to have that in the middle of two kids. Right. You know, it's they have to remember that. Yes. Yes. 
it's not like as the night progresses, the kids go away. It's they right. had it sandwiched in between two children, children. Yeah. No, but I thought oh, it was but, okay. And then TJ and Molly were super cute when she's like, what are you talking about? I just had to share you with all these people. Yes. Yes. Like the oh, and they told Jordan that they're trying. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the pressure that Jordan put on there on them though. Like I try not to be overly sensitive. We've talked about um, struggling to get pregnant before in real life and whatever. And just because they are two young, healthy people does not mean that they're going to get pregnant in a month or two. There's plenty of people who look young and healthy on the outside and even all their test results come back perfectly fine. There is such a thing as unexplained infertility where they cannot figure out what's wrong. So don't be pressuring them. They'll get pregnant when it's time for them. And that's how it is. Like, let them start with the seltzer. Right, exactly. They're like, we're not even trying, trying yet. We're just trying to get our bodies, like, super healthy. Can you calm down? I do think it's sweet that TJ is abstaining with her. Yes, that was sweet. I do think that's very nice. And I like the fact that they're getting healthy before trying because that is the right first step if you plan it. (laughs) Which part of them is not healthy, though? Like, I feel like they're both basically, but I think, that's just part of it is they're just like, okay, we're going to cut, but we're going to start watching what we're doing. Right. Right. Cut the alcohol out, you know, but like you just said, you could have the quote unquote most healthiest body in the world, according to the checklist. And you could do all the cardio and get all your steps in every day and eat the correct food pyramid. And right. Right. It just, it all just depends. And that if was, were, I love the fact that Jordan was excited and she was like, oh my gosh, it makes me incredible. You know, like that would have been. Yes. Like, yes. So you're telling me within a year, I'm going to have a grandbaby. And that's just like, whoa, I can't promise you that. Right. Right. Yeah. If, well, and that's if, part of why, like, it bothers me when people used to ask if my husband and I were going to have our own, even though I had two kids when he met me, I'm a package deal. They're right. his. Like right. he calls them his kids and people are like, yeah, but don't you want your own? And he's like, they're my kids. I couldn't promise that I could give him more. And if I had said, yeah, sure, we'll have more. And then that not happened. There are guys out there that would have left. There were guys that I dated in between that needed their quote own. And I was like, I can't promise you that. So you can go because I have two kids already. Right. You are welcome to join us. And that has to be enough for you. Right. If you don't anything know else you happens. Don't okay. Promising. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. No, I was fine with her being excited and I thought it was cute that they were like planning and, you know, talking about it and stuff like that. Like I said, I try not to be overly sensitive, but when she said that, oh, so you're telling me I'm going to have a grandbaby in a year. Like what? Well, you guys do everything else exceptionally well. So I know. No, first of all, you're his mom. So stop talking about his exceptional wellness that he does in the bedroom. Well, she did just watch him. (laughs) True. And just, it'll happen when it happens. So anyway, but it was, I liked how excited they were and how cute, how they're just cute together. So, but then we saw Mac felicia and bobby reminiscing about the old nurses yes. ball and when it started in 1994 and felicia was talking about how she had done her uh act as a clown and she's like because mm-hmm. she said i can't believe maxi had just been born when the first nurses ball took place and now here she is running the show like such a proud mom i did love felicia's dress too that was beautiful that was very pretty yes And then Mac talking about the Romeo and Juliet routine that Robin and Stone did, but he didn't say that Robin and Stone did. Yeah, he did. He talked about how he didn't know how important it would become to them, like how personal it would, but he didn't say that Robin and Stone did the Romeo and Juliet. He talked about how mad he was about the fact that there was a Romeo and Juliet scene, but he didn't say that Robin and Stone did it. Oh, see, I thought that he did. But yeah, it was cute the way they reminisced because I remember Mac being so mad about that. I wish that they had showed that at least, you know, a little snippet of that. And then it would have been great to have seen the next year is when Robin came out and said, I am the face of HIV. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand why we had 
Emma there for Epiphany's memorial, but we have not seen Emma for this. She was, she, I mean, obviously in real life, maybe she had scheduling conflicts, but as far as the storyline goes, there should have been some explanation saying she had to get back for something because if not, she would be at the nurse's ball. Right. Right. So that was the only thing I was like, what the heck? And then Carly introduced Bobby and they did a montage of her 45 years. Yes. Oh, and they picked all, oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i mean Did they had cry? bobby telling monica about her breast cancer they had felicia finding out about bj's heart and bobby being there for liz the day after she was raped i mean yeah oh my gosh <laughs> right right except for i think we need to start a new segment called carly's world in which <laughs> she highlights that they were adversaries at first. She said that Bobby found her. Carly um, came to Port Charles yeah. and targeted that woman to destroy her. Yeah. Yeah. That is <laughs> totally opposite from, yes, when we, Bobby was also looking for her at one point because of Lulu, right? It was because of, <laughs> right. But, but maybe she meant it more like metaphorically, like she found the real me. <laughs> Come on. Let That's her a out. stretch. Considering all the Carly rewrites we've been having lately with the uh, Reese died when I was in high school. Oh, no, 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 no. We have an entire huge storyline where Reese came back as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not rewrite. You cannot rewrite Carly and Bobby's history. No, you can't. It's too, too important. I agree. But they, you're right. They, She did say, you know, we were adversaries and you stuck with me. And and then Bobby introduced Lucy. Yes. Wait. And Lucy was there. And uh, Sonny found Lucy running from the bad guy in the back whenever he went to, uh, he was looking for Obrecht. And <laughs> so... <laughs> Lucy's listening to Bobby and she's not listening to any of the good things that Bobby is saying. She's only listening to the negative things that Bobby is saying. Bobby's trying to give like a whole life rundown and Lucy's not having any of it. And then she goes to figure out how to get on stage and ends up falling through the trips over something. Yeah. So Falls right through the screen. But everybody- clapped for her and was like happy that she was alive even Bobby was like oh my god you're alive welcome back (laughs) well before that she was trying to fight the guy off with a boa that was so funny it was so funny after she'd hit him correctly and got away and then he like gets up on her again and she's like I have this boa even Sunny is like what are you doing yeah (laughs) but that's where I feel like that's where we do have to pick up tomorrow is we have to have an actual end to the nurse's ball. That, yes. no. Right. What and then, else? so we saw Laura earlier go and check on Esme, and Esme was real jumpy about the baby and wouldn't let her hold him. And then Laura gets the call that Anna's at the hospital, so she goes to the hospital to check on Anna. And then... She comes back to the apartment and sees a pacifier laying on the floor, opens the door, and Esme is there, knocked out with no sign of Ace. Yep. At the same time that we see Spencer saying, hey, what's going on? Like, what's that sound? And Victor's like, you've never heard a boat engine before? So I do think that Spencer is not going to be okay with the way that they got Ace. No, I don't think he's going to be okay with that. And I don't think he wants to leave poor Charles. No, but I, I, mean, I, I truly do. Like, I think that he's going to be like, no, 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 no. This is not okay. I don't want him with Esme, but no, we're not doing this. Right. We're not going to live our life on the run forever. That's not okay. And I know that Joss just told him, go back 
to Europe and leave them alone and stuff. But he's worked things out with Trina enough. He's not just going to drop it and be like, oh, okay, I'm going back to Europe. So the question is, will this knockout of Esme bring her back? Ooh. Was my first thought. I'm like, they knocked her out. Is she going to get her memory back? Oh, okay. Maybe. I don't know. And then are we going to see a different side of her? What was that? Unless unless she remembers some deep, deep, dark family secrets about the Cassidines that Ryan told her, I don't understand why she'd get her memory back right now. Mm, Yeah. But they did refer to Holly and Ethan. Yeah. So, okay. (laughs) So we don't know. This has to end better than the hook, right? It better. I will be seriously angry if it doesn't. I'm still mad about that. My husband still asks occasionally. He's like, any update? I'm like, no, we're sticking with it being Heather Weber. Exactly. Stop asking me. You're just making me angry. I wasted way too much brain power on that, that I could have been spent doing other things. Yes. That I was super excited about. And then. Yep. Yep. And then the only other thing was Mac and Jordan discussing Eileen And I don't know if I'm wrong here. I feel like I might be. There was no air in her lungs, so that meant that she didn't drown. I thought that if you had water in your lungs, it meant that you drowned. That's what TV has told me. Right. I'm with you. Okay. Because Jordan said she had no air in her lungs, so she didn't drown. Can air get, like, trapped in with the water? But I thought that the water was the telltale. That's what CSI says. (laughs) <laughs> right that's that's what i would have thought too like if she died before she hit the water then whenever she hit the water she wouldn't have breathed in the water so there shouldn't be water in her lungs right but air do you get air. water in lungs from drowning With a lack of oxygen, a person becomes unconscious and water eventually fills up the lungs. Hmm. So I don't know. No, I don't know. And then, oh, and then Mac had to arrest Cody. Mm -hmm. Because Dante had already used his cuffs on Link. Yes. Well, he was already gone with Link, I'm assuming. Well, yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I hope they show them at the station and Mac is trying to help Cody figure out how this happened. Because... He was pretty straightforward with, I have to follow the evidence. But at the same time, we're trying to get Cody to admit that Mac is his dad. And so if Mac doesn't believe him, it's going to damage that relationship going forward. Right. (sighs) I don't think there was anything else. I was going to say, I think we went pretty line by line there. Oh, but Valentine, when he said to Anna, before he started singing, he said, from a tiny piano on the floor to you, the one that I adore. That uh-huh. was sweet. <laughs> You're so in love with Valentine. Yes. I'm yes, was- <laughs> in love with romance. Yes. They just don't do it for me. I don't know. Mm. Do, do, do. Reality check. I mean, that that doesn't lead me into anything with my I was going to say, my life is not nearly that romantic. <laughs> yes, I, I have not had any. No one serenaded me or played a baby grand piano for me this week. Um, my husband can sing. He just doesn't. Oh. And it drives me crazy because, like, sometimes, like, I'll hear him singing. Mm-hmm. And I'm, like, I'll just sit there and I'm, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've never heard him sing. Ryan used to be able to sing, but he's not as good now. He's old. <laughs> so. I don't know if he didn't practice enough or what. I mean, I don't think he's good enough to go quitting his day job and becoming a rock star, but I enjoy, he can, he can have his moments. Nice. I'll have to tell him to get a baby grand piano, (laughs) light the fire. We have a piano upstairs. He can learn that. You do. do. (laughs) Anyway, nothing romantic like that happening in my life. Obviously today is Easter. So the kids have been off since thursday night for school and so we've just done a bunch of family time we went bowling yesterday with my brother and uh, his daughter and my mom went and stuff and nice yeah friday night we hung out with them and just played some games and the kids hung out and stuff so 
I don't know. It just, I like my family time. So it was nice to have everybody together. We're not doing anything like major Eastery today. Uh, Madeline's going to go with her dad later on tonight. So they found their Easter baskets this morning. And Madeline was afraid that the Easter bunny had forgot hers because he hid it in the dishwasher. And she like peeked in the dishwasher, but didn't pull the racks out. And so she was like, Megan found hers in a, a minute. And, uh, Madeline was like, I can't find mine. And I was like, maybe the Easter Bunny forgot. She lost two teeth last night. And I told her that I didn't think that the Tooth Fairy worked holidays. So the Tooth Fairy may not come last night because it was Easter. And so this morning we thought maybe the Easter Bunny got confused and thought he didn't need to come because the Tooth Fairy was going to come. So it was entertaining watching her walk around trying to, to find it. So I wonder if they have a group chat. I would think to have to to get the wires straight, but I just assumed that she had holidays off. So I think it's fair. Yeah, that makes sense to me. You don't want them getting in each other's way when they're trying to do that. So she's going to take her teeth to her uh, dad's house and hope that the tooth fairy finds her there. So very cool. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of a crazy week. Uh, My daughter and I went to DC. We left at 5 30 Wednesday morning first time ever taking Amtrak how was so that I, so nice so our school takes the sixth graders to DC every year and you know there's a year between my daughter and son so because she goes to the private school she technically could have gone on the sixth grade trip but there would have been no point we didn't know anybody it's not like she had a friend in the grade that it would have made sense for us to go so the year my son went, we said, okay, we'll go next year. Well, the next year was the year that the company I was with conference was in Disney. Mm. So we decided not to do DC and just do Disney. Yeah. And then things just, you know, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, then COVID. And then okay. we finally planned it and she loves the cherry blossoms. And it was, and she's always, she wants a cherry blossom tree so badly. So we decided to go during the cherry blossom festival. Uh-huh. And when I booked it, I looked at it and I said, okay, we'll go in this week of April because I knew she didn't have school. I know why she didn't have school. It just didn't click together <laughs> that today was Easter. Mm-hmm. I mean, and Holy Week is actually my favorite holiday. Like, I love Christmas, but Holy Week and Easter are my favorite favorite. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I did not really think about that. Yeah. I just wasn't really thinking. We'll just throw it out there. I just wasn't lining them up. And then my company's conference, as we know, was just, I just got home last Wednesday, only to leave this Wednesday. So that was fun Mm -hmm. because that was March and this was April. And then in February, I did three trips in less than two months. Yeah. I'm beat. But so we decided because the school always takes like the big buses, you know, that's a fun adventure, not something that you always get to do. And when I was planning the trip, the cost of parking every day at the hotel was oh, like yeah. between 40 and $50 mm-hmm. plus gas, plus the wear and tear on my car. So I looked up Amtrak and it was $200, like just over $200 round trip. Wow. And then you just get the Metro pass when you're in DC. Cause between the Metro, the subway and the bus, you can pretty much get anywhere without a car. Mm-hmm. So we were planning to do that. And so we, but the only downside is it takes eight hours where it's only a four hour drive for us to DC from here. Okay. But I was like, you know what? I'm, we're going to have just some downtime. It'll be us. The drive to, or the ride down was nice. Um, the seats are bigger. You can recline. There's a foot rest. Oh, wow. All that. We got there around one. By the time we got to the hotel, like our room was ready and everything. So then we just hit the ground running, went to um, the botanical gardens and it was like 85 degrees. So it was pretty hot because it hasn't been that hot here. So we went to the Botanical Gardens, tried to go to the Air and Space Museum. And we looked at things or I looked at things before we came down and we knew that we needed to get entry tickets for the zoo, but there wasn't a time on it. I knew that for this one museum, I had to get entry tickets, but there wasn't a time on it. Air and Space Museum is the only museum that you need not only a an entry ticket, but a timed ticket for. Oh. And they were sold out through next Tuesday. 
Oh my gosh. And it was literally like one of the things that she was the most excited for. So of course I felt like such a failure. Mm -hmm. Could not find any tickets. Thankfully she was actually pretty understanding of it. So we went to the natural history museum. So she loves the night of the Smithsonian or night, of the museum movies. Yeah. So we did the natural history museum and then we did something else on Tuesday night. Oh, I found this restaurant before we went. And this is the thing, like I did research, so I don't know how I missed that the air and space museum needed mm-hmm. the time, time ticket because we found this restaurant that's Alice in Wonderland themed called Mad Hatter. Oh, that's cool. And they have all the different movie posters, but then also because it's a book, well, it was a book first before it was a movie. There's all the different literary drawings that are hanging up all over the place. And then there's different quotes and then there's an upside down room. So the dining room's up on the ceiling. Oh, that's cool. And then Wednesday we did Wednesday. It was supposed to no Thursday. It was supposed to rain like all day. It was 97% chance of rain. 87 degrees. Didn't rain once, but it was 87 degrees, which was Mm. very hot. But we were on this great bus, had a great tour. It was through, hold on, because I do want to give them a shout out. But it was a six-hour tour. We did stops at different landmark signature tours, sorry, signature tours. And Tyrone was our guide. He was amazing. But we drove by all the different monuments and stopped at some. So it was like perfect because, and I've never done tours of DC. Like I've gone to DC many times, but never done, been like a tourist tourist where you take the tours, you do all that stuff. It was perfect because you pretty much got out of the ones that you really wanted to and didn't have to walk in between. And then we took an hour boat ride on the Potomac and learned some more. Oh, that's cool. And so it, it took up most of the day. And then we went to the American History Museum afterwards And then Thursday, no, Friday, sorry, my days are all off. Friday was not supposed to rain. The only day it was supposed to rain was Thursday. Friday, it rained in the morning, but that was the day we went to the National Zoo. And that was the morning that we did have a difficult morning. So we were set back by about an hour, but I got to show her the pandas, which I was so Uh super excited about. And she got to see all of her animals and the girl loves animals. She knows so many of the most obscure animals that I have no idea even existed. I learned so much from her. And apparently, so at the very front, they have zoo written in concrete. Mm-hmm. And we, there was a woman who was like, hey, I'll get a picture of you if you take a picture of me and my mom. Okay, cool. You do that all the time when you go places. As they're leaving, the mom comes up to me and goes, she's a former na- or White House photographer. Oh, wow. So I'm like, okay. And then I started looking up and I couldn't, like, there's official White House photographers. And then there's, I don't know. So I couldn't quite pinpoint because... She was having a Saturday more or Friday morning with her mom at the zoo. Yeah. But I just, it was such a cute proud mom moment because she was like, by the way, do you know who that is? But, uh, um, and then we went to a place called the Hillwood Estates, which is like a huge mansion and got private gardens. And then we went to Arlington and I did a tour there too, which I don't know why I've ever walked that because wow, mm-hmm. but I've walked it, not the whole thing, but the tour is really, really, really good. I highly rec- recommend that. And then Saturday morning, we did Ford's Theater, which somehow is something that I'd never done before either. Oh. Yeah, you definitely would have thought that. So those that are newer listeners, my husband used to do Civil War reenacting. Then again, he hadn't even been to D.C. before he met me. So we'll just. Mm. Yeah, I had never done Ford's Theater before. And then we went to the Petalpalooza, which was kind of one of the last ceremonies, one of the last things for the Cherry Blossom Festival. So that was fun. And then. Amtrak has this amazing feature where up to 36 hours before your trip, you can bid on an open room Mm. if it's available. So we had just had coach seats and those were the ones that were like a hundred down and a hundred up, 105 up, 105 down. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw it out there. I'll bid $130 on a bedroom Mm -hmm. that retails at 425 one way. Mm -hmm. And I won. And so we came home in a private bedroom, dinners included. You get a complimentary beverage, which, I mean, she got a pop and I had a glass of wine included in the ticket. They came down and put down the beds for us when we were ready. We got a little bit of sleep, arrived home after midnight. 
the guys came to pick us up. My son's home from college for the holiday. But I think I just spoiled myself because now I don't want to travel the train <laughs> in coach right, <laughs> anymore. <right. laughs> the one time I did was enough. But mm-hmm. it really was so cool. You have a private attendant that you just buzz the little thingy for. But she and I have never done a mother-daughter trip before. And we're so much, we do spend like a lot of one-on-one time together, but it's a lot of therapy and meetings and appointments and taking her to and from things yeah. like that. Or if she's home from school, I have to take her to work with me. And so, yeah, we get our one-on-one time, but not like this. So it was really, really nice to be able to spend four full days, just the two of us together. And I was really happy. That there was a lot of stuff that I hadn't done before either. So it's like we did a lot of things together for the first time. First time, yeah. So, yeah, it was it was really really nice. It was awesome. Something I hadn't really real. I mean, I obviously realized like I don't get to do this stuff with my daughter, but right. You know, part of part of her diagnosis is so much other stuff that we have to get done, and it's not always fun. Even though we're spending the time together, so yeah, this was all fun. Awesome! I'm so glad and we were. Good. We were passed out by like nine each night. <laughs> we were so tired. Our legs hurt. But yeah. Good trip. Good trip. That's awesome. And now I'm done <laughs> for the foreseeable <laughs> future. I'm I'm broke and my body hurts. So <laughs> <laughs> But thank God for my job though, because like I did do a little bit of work while I was gone. But Right. That flexibility is awesome. I was able to have a friend showed one of my buyers, I think two houses while I was gone. So that was nice. Nice. Yeah. So, oh yeah, this Thursday's 411 is the GM Betty boys. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we started off with, oh, we should talk about Milo. And then we looked at Max and went, oh, gee, we should talk about Max too. And then we remembered that their dad was on for a minute. Yep. So... Mm -hmm. This Thursday's 411 is going to be all about the GM Betty boys. We are going to be doing the 60 year recap next week, the following week. So. Yeah. So have a good week and we'll meet at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier 54 podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 